You're watching us here on Mad About Markets. On this show, we discuss a lot of interesting, unusual, unmapped industries. And yeah. today, the one that interests both Ritu and me is the books industry, or the publishing industry, so to say. Both of us are readers. Ritu, uh, you don't read much because I don't see you posting much on Instagram about them. Well, not everybody who's reading is bookstagramming what they're reading, but you know, fact or fiction, I mean, I love reading both and so do you. I do too, but I lately I've been reading on my Kindle a lot more than I've been reading physical books. Well, that's actually a trend that's picked up during the pandemic a lot more and, you know, as always, let's size up this market because that's what we do here on Mad About Markets. Now, it was about 30,660 crore rupees, that is the size of the market, as of FY15 for the publisher industry but in just five years it more than doubled to 72,000 crore rupees and come FY24 the industry is expected to cross a hundred thousand crores now here are some facts about the publishing industry in India to give you a context of what we're really talking about now India is the third largest publisher of printed books globally and it is the second largest English print book publishing market which is just after the United States however the industry remains highly fragmented and it is quite competitive because we have more than 24,000 and publishers along the market uh, with a substantial unorganized segment as well. Now, India is a country with 20 languages officially, 1,600 plus regional languages. So it's not really surprising that almost 47% of the leisure books that you and I read that are sold in India are sold in regional languages. Now, the share of foreign publishers in India, that is estimated at around 10 to 15% of the overall market. And lastly, in terms of what are the biggest costs for the publishing industry today, it is paper. Because that alone contributes, you wouldn't believe, almost 60% of the overall cost of publishing. And the way paper prices are increasing, this is only set to increase. Uh, thank you for setting the industry up so well as far as uh, uh, you know publishing in India is concerned. But if you just take a look at uh, the two broad segments of India's publishing industry, and uh, well, the smallest part is the trade segment. This is books that you and I read for leisure. Most importantly, these are the ones which are traded in the market as well. 96% of the books in the country are actually educational books, academic books, etc. So a large part of India's uh, you know publishing industry comprises of the non-trade segment, as against other countries where the contribution of the trade segment is a lot more. Now, if you just take a look at uh, the non-trade segment, the 95% uh, uh, of the industry that we're talking about, 71% uh, comprises of your educational books, which is your KG to 12 standard books, and 24% are uh, academic books, uh, the kinds for higher education, etc. The remaining 4%, which is leisure books, of which 47% is sold in regional languages, 55% accounts for non-fiction, a large part of that perhaps is self-help and uh, management books as well. 25% is children's books and fiction accounts for just about 20%. 20% of 4% is uh, the fiction market in India. Ritu, are you a fact reader or uh, or non-fiction reader or a uh, fiction reader? You know how they say, right? Fact is stranger than fiction and <laughs> fiction about fact. I think that is my favorite genre. But on that note, uh, let's invite our guest on the show. We're joined by Ashwin Sanghi, who's a famous Indian author. Anand Padmanabhan, the CEO of HarperCollins India. Rajesh Basari, who's the managing director Director of Macmillan Education, and also with us is Vikrant Mathur, the Executive Director of Nielsen Bookscan. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here. Anand, I'll begin with you. You know, what proportion of your sales are you currently seeing from physical bookstores versus online? In the in the pre-pandemic world, it used to be uh, you know five out of ten books were sold in bookstores. It's now down to three out of ten books, but it's growing. Uh, we are seeing as more and more bookshops are coming up, especially for children's books. I think it's important for a child to be able to touch, feel, or even for the parent to see the book. And we're seeing that happening a lot more. So um, let's say by about, at about December, let's say we were selling 70% uh, in through online, 30%. I think it'll be more towards a 60, 40 as more and more bookshops open. We, see, we are seeing fantastic business in uh, the airport bookshops. A lot more people are traveling now. We're seeing great business of physical stores for children's. Adult bestsellers tend to be purchased online because you don't have to check it for size or color, so people buy more. But the advantage there when you order online is people are buying more than one book at a time. Um, so 60-40 will be a good mix. Six out of 10 online, four physical, because discoverability, or you when you know what you want, you might go online. But when you're looking for a good book to read, I think you want to stand and browse, and that's a habit that you can't take off people. 
interesting perspective. There are more people traveling, so more buying from the airport bookstores, etc. And when you buy online, you obviously buy more than one book. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of that as well. But Vikrant, coming to you, can you throw some light uh, at, at, on the rate at which the sub-segments of the publishing industry are likely to grow at? The sectors which are growing, I think it's the educational sector which is growing tremendously over 2024%. Uh, and the kind of growth is coming out because of the we are the largest enrollment uh, in the school market while we are in the higher education we are third largest enrolled enrollment by students uh, if you look at the other two which are china and us outside that india is the biggest market in the higher education space and that's the reason of uh, india continue to be remain the solid growth market uh, we continue to grow uh, the educational sector, as I said, over 24%. While if you look at the other market, which is the major rating, that's also growing about 12% year-on-year basis. Well, interesting numbers then. We'll get to why the education uh, part of the publishing industry is growing faster, thanks to a lot of policy support. But Ashwin, let me come to you, because you know, you're also an author. What is the kind of opportunity that you're looking at in publishing? The market has really changed in the last couple of years. You started out as a self-publisher. Now, what do you see as some of the challenges as the industry has grown? I started out in 2003, uh, and I completed my first book in 2005 couldn't find a publisher all the way through till 2008, a full three years, and I had to initially self-publish. So yes, there are opportunities today, but the truth is that every opportunity comes with a significant challenge. Uh, I like to call the process Agni Pariksha, trial by fire almost. Uh, you, you know, uh, the well-established literary agents, uh, for example, in New York or London, they receive almost around 100,000 unsolicited queries in a year. Uh, and for example, one of the most reputed agencies a couple of years ago only took on four new writers during the year. So the what are the odds of actually getting representation from one of these biggies? Uh, so the truth is that it's not about how good a writer you are, it's more about how thick-skinned you are. Uh, the necessary condition for getting an agent or a publisher is to write well, but the sufficient condition is to keep knocking on doors, rejection after rejection. Take that point. Uh, but, you know, just to understand why non-trade books are actually dominating, picture this, the publishing in industry in India is an essential part of the Indian education system. There are nearly 250 million K-12 or KG to class 12 students and more than 35 million higher education students in the country. These students rely primarily on books as their primary medium for learning. The fact that the trade segment is largely unorganized means that non-trade dominates all the more. So that explains why, you know, we have 96% of the industry which is uh, almost uh, exclusively dedicated towards education and higher education, whereas leisure accounts for just around 4%. Yeah, and to take that forward, you know, even though print books are currently dominating the publishing landscape in India and digital formats account for a very small share of the market at about 8 to 10 percent is the latest data that we have as of 2019. And this is expected to have improved because audiobooks and e-books are expected to be critical growth drivers in the future. The increased penetration of technology and internet into the lives of Indians, that is bound to change the way we're consuming knowledge as well sooner than later, which is why you're seeing the shift in the incre increasing significance of digital books. That's correct. So, you know, that's, uh, uh, let's, let's pose that question to Rajesh itself. Rajesh, what according to you is the penetration of digital been like in the past few years, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic? So, uh, see, uh, if you ask me, uh, uh, you know, digital pre-pandemic was never a new phenomenon. You know, if you look at uh, specific to, uh, you know, a company like Macmillan, which has been at the forefront of uh, curriculum in India in the, for the last uh, one century or more than a century, you know, we have been investing into digital, uh, you know, through interactive whiteboard solutions, apps and digital products. Uh, that's why I said it's nothing new. But yes, uh, during pandemic, one thing which really gained uh, prominence uh, in the market is the emergence of blended learning, you know, uh, uh, you know LMS solutions uh, with, with a host of services built around it has actually become big, you know, in terms of, and critical for growth for 
a lot of publishing houses. Let's take a look at some of the emerging channels as well that could further boost the growth of uh, the publishing market in India. And the biggest one of them all is uh, online retail, which accounts for nearly 50% of trade books. So nearly 3% of the overall books which are sold in some titles could actually be online as well. Uh, books are being sold via subscription and bundle packages as well. So if you are, you know, buying books via subscription models where a book comes to you every month or bundle packages where you get, say, uh, the entire collection of an author, etc. That's emerging as an interesting channel. Uh, open access, free to users. A lot of universities, a lot of academia, they're giving access to users for free to a lot of the research that they have. So that could be an interesting channel. And finally, self-publishing benefits. We've been speaking about eliminating the middleman here, whether it be D2C, whether it be, you know, logistics or anything of that sort. Self-publishing is one of those channels which is emerging as well, where people just print their own books and publish uh, uh, and publicize it online. All right, let's put that question to the author. Uh, Ashwin, you know, what are the alternate revenue sources for you now? Is it more lucrative to be an author today or do you think you'd rather be in the publishing, publishing businesses? Today, we are now looking at an environment where people are not looking for writers. People are looking for content producers. So in that sense, you may have written a story which may have worked either well or not so well as a book, but it may lend itself very well to an on-screen adaptation, either in the form of OTT or in the form of a movie. The truth of the matter is that till the time that OTT developed, uh, uh, Bollywood and Hollywood worked as per their own rules. Suddenly, we've now had a situation where there is a greater democratization of uh, adaptation platforms. So suddenly you have multiple streaming channels as well as multiple producers associated with those channels, which means obviously that that's good news for authors because the chances of your work getting picked up for adaptation are that much higher. Very often the amount that an author may make in the form of his initial advances and subsequent royalties may be, uh, the, the amount may be far greater by uh, uh, in terms of the the uh, dollar and cents that he or she earns from the adaptation rights. Uh, that is one. Second is that nowadays we are talking about multiple spin-offs that happen even beyond uh, movies and uh, OTT. For example, now video gaming has become big. So you, you, look, at, you look at the number of uh, movies and franchises which are leading into video gaming, uh, that's again a whole new ball game. So books are not the only source of revenue for authors these days. It is lucrative because you have a lot of OTT series as well as uh, movies being made. Ritu, any movie that you like which was based on a book and you like the movie better? <laughs> Well, um, I would say the books are always better. I mean, take for instance, The Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter series. I mean, the books are so much better than what we see on television, but that's just, of course, a personal choice. What would you say of The Godfather? <laughs> huh, that may be an exception, one of them. <laughs> All right, we'll argue about this in just a bit, but take a break. On the other side, we'll analyze what's working for the publishing industry and what necessarily isn't. The yeas and the ways. And also the bigger question, as we always ask, and that is, what's the tale of India's publishing industry going ahead? That and more when we return. We're discussing India's publishing industry and its prospects here on Mad About Markets. A hundred thousand crore opportunity. Let's weigh the pros and cons. What do we call it? The yeas and the mays. And as always, Manglam loves going with the yeas. I love going with the yeas, the eternal optimist. So let's talk about the big, uh, you know, boost coming in, which is the National Education Policy, which aims to increase the pre-K, K-12, basically school gross enrollment rate to 100% by yeah. 2030. So more kids going to school, more demand for books. Yay for the industry. But could you imagine that almost a fourth of the industry is dealing with a huge issue and that is piracy because pirated books, they account for 20 to 25% of the total. I well, can't argue against uh, piracy being a big may, but you know, talking about not just uh, the national education policy, we also yeah. have the Right to Education Act and a lot of other initiatives taken by both straight central governments and a lot of organizations to increase 
the demand for quality educational content and thus publishing. You spoke about education, right? But in the last few years, the hybrid education model has emerged, which has reduced the demand for published books, and that's a negative for the industry. Reduce the demand just by a bit. But what's also happened in the last few years is yeah. that people are buying books to take pictures of those <laughs> books and post it on Instagram, Bookstagram, Current Read, all those hashtags are making reading trending, uh, trendy again. Uh, whether they read or not is the big question. Well, that's the problem, right? They're posting more about it and reading less because there's so much distraction these days in OTT platforms, your Amazon, your Netflix, the content on your phone. There's more time spent watching that than reading books on your, uh, you know, Kindle or otherwise. But you know what? What has also happened is all these authors have become celebrated authors. They become yeah. celebrities in their own right. Globally, yeah. we've had uh, J.K. Rowling, etc. Here as well, the inflection point was Chetan Bhagat writing first, and then you had Amish Tripathi, Ashwin Sanghi, all these guys. Their book launch have become a spectacle and people really look forward to these. They do and that is an incentive for the authors and the industry but the dominance of e-readers because more people are choosing e-books that makes reading on the go easier yes but not so good for the industry. Not so good for the printing industry maybe a couple of these book companies may yeah. earn a little from uh, the digital penetration but not only are authors becoming celebrities celebrities are also becoming authors True. so we have a lot of people who are celebrated commissioning books and why just people we have corporations also wanting to tell their story to the world so that's a yay for the industry you know but these authors or celebrity authors or whatever you call them they're also dealing with ineffective copyright protection issues which is a huge negative that they have to deal with they have to deal with that along with the complex book distribution system in india but there are emerging multiple channels because we do see people selling the books online. We yeah. see people selling it via various options that we just spoke about. Hmm. But importantly, a lot of them are also self-publishing. But you know, every time we speak about the opportunity in a country like India that is so big and diverse, you know, the rules change every few states because private publishers face significant competition from state publishing housing because of varying rules across the country, which inhibits the industry from operating like a free market. Yes, but what the free market also benefits from are economies of scale and yeah. the technological advances. Now people can print just on demand per mm. book. So these have made printing industries or publishing industries a lot more efficient. I take your point, but you know, another major issue across the distribution change is the longer payment receivable cycle, especially for academic content, where in India, it is four to nine months of a cycle and far higher than the other countries. And of course, uh, lastly, we do have the cost of paper that we spoke about at the beginning. 60% of the total cost of publishing is paper alone. That kind of cost is difficult to sustain. That's true. You know, so we've spoken about some of the negatives for the industry. But Ashwin, let me come to you on what you think are the key challenges, especially when we talk about copyright infringement and piracy issues. The way that copyright, the, the way that the registration process works, that in itself needs to undergo a change in the sense that we need to bring our institutions, including the copyright office, into the 21st century in terms of the time it takes for registration of uh, copyright, number one. Number two is the enforcement of copyrights. Uh, now, obviously, one of the huge challenges in the world of books is the fact that there is a 25% pi piracy. In fact, probably I'm, I'm being generous when I say it's 25%, it could be more. Uh, so th that is a, is a very, very big challenge and it's very difficult to enforce it because very often the, the, the piraters keep changing. So uh, it's by the time you've brought out, uh, uh, taken legal action against one and shut one down, another 10 have uh, popped up. That is one. The second part of it is in terms of copyright violations, uh, in terms of your content. And that is where, again, our legal system, unfortunately, tends to uh, uh, really play havoc with us. Uh, because according to me, we should not be leaving the enforcement of copyright purely to the commercial courts. Uh, we should be having a separate tribunal in terms of copyrights, which is specialized to be able to deal with such disputes. Well, that's quite a suggestion, a separate court for copyright infringement laws, etc. Let's see how that comes about. But, you know, Anand, uh, the bigger question here is how do you compete for a reader's time when there are so many other forms of content consumption? I mean, there's everyone watching a lot of uh, content on their OTTs, etc., the phones, the TVs. Where do books find their space? Has OTT been a distraction? Yes, everywhere in the world, especially here as well. Now people, you don't see as many people on a plane with a book. Everybody's downloaded something to watch. And most conversations about are about what are you watching? Uh, but I'll give you a good example. There are many 
uh, OTT, which has driven sales up for uh, physical books. So Lord of the Rings, which is a HarperCollins series, and Game of Thrones, also a HarperCollins series. Both we've seen that people are watching the show, but also driving up uh, purchase of the print books. But it's a good thing in that, uh, eventually, um, we all love stories. OTT platforms have fantastic storytelling. And I think the reader will also know that fiction, obviously, that's one of the reasons there's a big consumption of fiction. People will come back to buy. But it is true that we need to catch our kids young. They were, uh, I can think of Harry Potter as one of that inflection points where a 10-year-old Harry Potter now, uh, Harry Potter reader would now be 25. So I think you need those points in which you are able to make a big shift from a non-reader to reader. And India is a big market of reluctant readers. Um, so is that distraction? Yes. But should we be catching kids younger and putting a book into their hand as early as possible, making future readers to hit that big number of being potentially being from the third largest to the you know world's largest uh, book buying community? We can. They all help each other is what I'm saying. Well, who would have thought OTT would drive people to go back and read those books and catch them young, like they always say, right? But on that note, we'll uh, come to the bigger question to all of you, which is, you know, what really is the tale of India's publishing industry? Anand, you go first, and then we'll have Rajesh tell us what he thinks. Uh, especially in a country where English is almost first language, and we have the benefit and advantage of over 25 languages and big books are published. Uh, if if a series of things happened, which is uh, government libraries, government purchase, vibrant schools, more bookstores, I think we need 5,000 bookstores, we have 500, and online penetration the way it is, and adoption of digital, both e and audio, we can be the world's largest book market. We are now number three, and I'm very confident that we will be over the next 10 years. See, as I mentioned, you know, the publishing industry is in for, you know, exciting times ahead and uh, will continue growing in double digit uh, for sure in the coming years as well. Uh, with paper and uh, print, uh, you know, inflation at unprecedented levels, uh, the absolute growth in the industry will also be very high, uh, given that most of the publishers will be looking at a significant price increase in the coming years. Uh, the growth rate will also be fueled by uh, the in, you know, inclusion of pre-primary schools in the overall uh, new curriculum structure as per NEP, because they'll be now open to uh, you know, using, uh, you know, uh, I would say, uh, excellent print quality and resources uh, uh, you know, from all the leading publishing houses. Uh, well, uh, you know, if you ask me from a, uh, a growth perspective, I see, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, things are going to be very interesting and exciting going forward. Rajesh, thank you so much. Anand, you too. Uh, we hope that we become the largest book market in the world by 2030. Ashwin, Vikrant, thank you for taking the time out. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Mad About Markets. You keep watching the show, but also keep reading.